SpaceX pitched a radical idea to NASA. Land Starship horizontally on the moon, using its body as the landing surface. NASA rejected it outright. Why? The fatal flaw is mass. Engineers discovered that horizontal landing demands massive structural reinforcements, extra fuel tanks, and heavier systems, adding so much dead weight that each mission needs more refueling trips while carrying less cargo and fewer crew. Could this mass problem kill the entire concept? Welcome to Space Update 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. Elon Musk has always hated landing legs. They're heavy, they complicate the design, and every hinge and strut becomes another potential failure point. But here's the paradox. Without legs, a 50-meter rocket has nothing to stabilize it on touchdown. It would simply collapse sideways. So for years, legs seemed like a necessary evil until Musk stopped thinking like everyone else. His solution? Mechazilla, a giant steel tower with robotic arms that literally snatch the booster out of midair. It works brilliantly on Earth. But can you catch a rocket on the moon where there's no infrastructure? On Mars, where dust storms could disable the tower? That's when SpaceX engineers started exploring something far more radical. Back in Starship's early development phase, Musk proposed using the ship's own body as the landing platform. The concept was straightforward. Descend vertically like normal, then gently tip sideways just before touchdown using a deployable composite pad to distribute impact forces. SpaceX even submitted this design to NASA's human landing system competition. NASA's response? Absolutely not. They demanded traditional vertical landings with legs for crewed missions. Too risky, they said. But the space community couldn't let it go. Online forums exploded with variations of the concept. One viral animation showed a starship equipped with four side-mounted Raptor engines, allowing it to rotate mid-descent and land horizontally like an aircraft. The idea gained traction because it solved real problems. Or did it? The theoretical advantages seemed compelling. Horizontal landing spreads impact forces across multiple contact points along the rocket's side instead of concentrating everything on narrow leg struts. Think of it like distributing weight. A wider stance means better stability and less risk of tipping during touchdown. But there's another benefit that caught everyone's attention. Side-mounted engines lower the rocket's center of gravity. It's the same principle that keeps sports cars stable through aggressive turns. They sit lower to the ground. In theory, this configuration makes the rocket inherently more stable during landing sequences. Traditional bottom-mounted engines can't offer this advantage. They push straight down through a single narrow axis, forcing the legs to absorb all impact forces while somehow keeping 50 meters of steel perfectly vertical. That's a massive engineering challenge, especially on Mars where atmospheric drag and descent angles complicate everything. So could side mounting actually work? Some engineers pointed to a fascinating detail. Starship's flap hinge points, those massive joints that hold the aerodynamic flaps, endure over 400 tons of lateral force during Mars atmospheric entry. That's enormous stress, yet they're engineered to handle it without failure. So here's the question that sparked intense debate. If those hinge points already withstand such extreme side loads, why not just mount engines there? The logic seems sound. SpaceX could install small Raptor engines or powerful thrusters at existing hinge points, using structures already designed for massive lateral forces. No need to reinforce the entire hull, just leverage what's already there. On the moon, the case seemed even stronger. No atmosphere means no aerodynamic stress during descent. The lunar starship HLS version might handle horizontal landing with its current structure. Maybe just minor tweaks required. And side-mounted engines aren't science fiction. The space shuttle used six small vernier thrusters for orientation adjustments. NASA's space launch system combines large bottom-mounted main engines with smaller auxiliary thrusters around the body for control. We've done this before just never as the primary landing system. Why not scale it up? Here's where everything falls apart. All those historical examples, the shuttle thrusters, the SLS auxiliaries, served as support systems only, never for main lift or landing thrust. Engineers discovered there's a critical reason for that limitation. Side-mounted engines create uneven structural pressure. Instead of pushing straight up through the rocket's central axis, 
They push from angles, bending the frame like pressing on one side of a ruler. That bending generates what engineers call concentrated structural stress. To withstand it, the rocket's body needs massive reinforcement. And massive reinforcement means massive weight gain. But it doesn't stop there. Fuel routing becomes exponentially more complex. You need entirely different propellant lines, new thrust vectoring systems, and constant balance management while engines fire sideways. Each addition creates more potential failure points. And here's the killer. All this complexity adds dead weight that serves no purpose until the final landing moments. We're talking about extra fuel tanks heavier than the current aerodynamic flaps, just to maintain controlled flight during the horizontal approach. One Reddit engineer broke down the math. Every kilogram of structural reinforcement reduces payload capacity. Less payload means more refueling missions. More refueling missions mean exponentially higher costs. You'd need to redesign the entire vehicle just to make horizontal landing marginally functional. Another compared it to modifying a Toyota Corolla for off-road use. Sure, you could raise the suspension and add bigger tires, but by the time you've reinforced the frame, upgraded the drivetrain, and added proper clearance, you've basically built a Toyota Tacoma, a completely different vehicle designed from the ground up for that purpose. The Corolla's fundamental design simply wasn't meant for it. Why would Starship be different? Then there's the stability problem. Engines positioned far from the horizontal center of mass require incredibly precise thrust balancing to prevent pitching. A tiny imbalance with such long lever arms creates drastic rotational forces, and fuel sloshing becomes exponentially worse in horizontal tanks. Yes, anti-slosh baffles exist, but they're optimized for vertical orientation. Horizontal flight changes everything. The internal layout presents another headache. Do you keep crew quarters at one end and fuel tanks at the other? If so, balancing the entire ship during horizontal approach becomes a nightmare scenario. The center of mass shifts constantly as fuel burns. One miscalculation and you're tumbling. Defenders argue that Starship already handles huge lateral loads during re-entry. So what's different? Engineers explain it's fundamentally not comparable. During re-entry, aerodynamic pressure distributes evenly across the entire hull. It's a distributed load. But during horizontal landing, forces concentrate at just a few points. Engine mounts and contact pads. That creates intense localized stress that the hull wasn't designed to handle. Completely different engineering challenge. SpaceX specifically engineers lunar thrusters high on the HLS version for one critical reason, lunar regolith. It's not soft powder. It's made of sharp glass-like particles that blast outward at high speeds when disturbed by rocket exhaust, damaging equipment and coating everything nearby. High-mounted thrusters keep exhaust away from the surface. Horizontal landing doesn't solve this. It makes it worse by blowing dust sideways instead of straight down, potentially damaging the ship's entire length and creating visibility problems for crew during final approach. NASA learned this lesson the hard way during Apollo missions. NASA's Human Landing System program contracted two companies, SpaceX for Artemis 3 and 4, Blue Origin for Artemis 5. Both designs use traditional vertical landing with legs. For Artemis 3 and beyond, the lander launches uncrewed to lunar orbit and waits. Orion spacecraft brings astronauts from Earth aboard NASA's SLS rocket. Two crew members transfer to the lander in lunar orbit and descend to the surface. Later missions will use Gateway Lunar Space Station for crew transfers. Notice what's missing from NASA's plan? Any mention of horizontal landing. They evaluated SpaceX's proposal and rejected it for fundamental reasons. Mass penalties, complexity, and unproven reliability. When you're putting humans on another world, proven engineering beats innovative concepts every time. So here's the brutal truth. Horizontal starship landing isn't just impractical. It's fundamentally incompatible with SpaceX's core mission philosophy. Every kilogram of reinforcement steel, every extra fuel tank, every complex thrust vectoring system adds mass that could have been payload capacity. That's cargo not delivered, astronauts not transported, scientific equipment left behind on Earth. Musk himself preaches the gospel of mass efficiency. He's eliminated every unnecessary gram from Starship's design. The entire Mechazilla catch system exists because landing legs were too heavy. So why would SpaceX suddenly embrace a concept 
that adds thousands of kilograms of dead weight for a single landing maneuver. The math simply doesn't work. NASA understood this immediately. They evaluated the proposal, ran the numbers, and chose traditional vertical landing with legs. Not because they lack imagination, but because they understand mission-critical priorities. Reliability, proven technology, and mass efficiency. When you're landing humans on another world, you don't experiment with concepts that multiply failure points and slash payload capacity. Does this mean side-mounted engines have no future? Maybe some distant Starship variant will incorporate them for specialized missions, but for lunar and Mars landings, the classic bottom-mounted configuration remains undefeated for good reason. It works. What do you think? Could future technology solve the mass problem, or is horizontal landing permanently dead? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If this breakdown changed how you see SpaceX engineering, hit that like button and share this video. And subscribe to Space Update 24 hours for more deep dives into the real engineering behind space exploration. We cut through the hype and show you what actually works and what doesn't.